All right, now's the time of our service where kids come forward. Kids of all ages are invited to come forward at this time. Awesome. Oh, it's so good to be together. You guys have a good Christmas? Yeah. Yay, awesome. Well, it is so good to see you. We are saying goodbye to 2019 and saying hello to 2020 today. And so to do that, I want to introduce you to a phrase. Can we see that, please? And hindsight is 2020. Now, kids, have you ever heard that phrase before? Anybody? Anybody? Adults, hopefully you've heard that before. Basically, what it means is when you go, can I borrow these minutes? When you go to the optometrist and you try to figure out if you need glasses, if the doctor says that you have 20-20 vision, maybe now with your glasses, that means you can see things pretty well. And so hindsight is 2020 means in your life, when you take a moment to look back at where you've been, you see that some of the decisions you made were really good and helpful, and maybe some of the other decisions you made weren't so nice. And so hindsight is 2020 takes effort, it takes work. And what we want to do for this new year is give you a tool to have that ability to have hindsight being 2020. So to do that, I have a game. Anybody know what the name of this game is? What's the name of this game? The Game of Life. How many of you ever played the Game of Life before? Very good. Can you move back a little bit here? All right, I need three volunteers to help me play the Game of Life. One, two, I'm trying to pick people I haven't. Camden, you want to be three? All right, come on up, buddy. All right. All right, so you want to be three? Sure. Camden, you could be two. Who did I call him first? Scott? Okay, come over here and be one. Camden, sit down right there, buddy. All right, can you back up a little bit? All right. All right, so the way that we're going to play today, you're going to be the red card, you're going to be the yellow, you're going to be the three. We're going to start here. So, Scott, you're going to go first. I want you to pick that card. All right, and since I have a microphone, I'm going to read it for you. Player one. You have been blessed with amazing intellectual abilities. In other words, you're very smart. You may either choose to go left and get hired at a local microchip fabrication business, or you can choose to go right and get a full ride to MIT on the East Coast. Ooh, which one do you want to do? The left. Okay, spin, and then go the number that it says. All right, six. You want to go left, so go six. Yep, so one, two, three, four, going this way now, five, six. They're very good. Kids, raise your hand if you think he made the right decision. Raise your hand if you think he made the wrong decision. Okay, we'll have to find out. All right, Camden, pick a card, pick a card right there. All right, can I read it for you? Player two, you have been blessed with great athletic ability. In other words, you're very fast. You can either chose, choose to go left, and you can get hired by a local <laughs> zoo to keep their cheetahs in shape, <laughs> or you can choose to go right and get a full ride to Stanford University on their track team. Camden, which way do you want to go? Right or left, buddy? <coughs> left. Okay, spin it. Spin it. Awesome. Very good. Okay, so how many is that? Four. Can I help you, or you want to do it? One. Two, three, four. Very good. So kids, how many of you think you made the right decision? How many think you made the wrong decision? Oh, we'll find out. All right, Manny, your turn. Pick that card. It would be so fun to keep cheetahs in shape, wouldn't it be? All right. I'm going to read it for you, okay, Manny? Player three, you have been blessed to be part of a family who owns a successful car dealership. In other words, you're a gearhead who knows all about cars and how they work. You can either choose to go left, meaning you get hired by the family business and you help the company grow, or you can choose to go right and get a full ride to Kettering University to learn more about automobile engineering. Which way you want to go? Left or right, kid? Right. Okay, spin. Spin. Awesome. Four. So go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. How many of you think she made the right decision? How many of you think she made the wrong decision? Now, here's the thing. Scott, Camden, and Maddie, how do you actually know if you made the wrong decision or the right decision? How do you come to know? What do you think? Because you don't know right now, right? How do you come to know? It's playing the game of life. How will you know if that was the right decision to make? Oh, I love it, Scott. Yes, you have to go down the road. Notice, really, there's only one road. There's 
There's many journeys to get there, but there's one road. And when you get to the end, then you can have that 2020 hindsight looking back. But for you kids here today, here's an important question we all need to ask ourselves. Before we make a decision, what would God want me to do in this situation? And when we do that, when we ask the Lord, what should we do? Whether that's we're praying, whether that's we look in God's word, whether that's we're using the tool that we're giving every family today, we come to understand that the Lord wants us to be faithful when we make those decisions. And over time, we could look back to see that hindsight is 2020, and that's what we want for this new year. Let's give our volunteers a round of applause. Can you hold this one for me? All right, you guys can grab a oh, I'm falling here. piece of candy. Vivian, can you hold that for me? All right, so you guys can grab a piece of candy before you return to your seats. If you attend preschool through first grade, you can head to rest stop with your parents' permission. Everyone else, if you can open up your Bibles and we see it, to the book of Romans, chapter 14. We're only going to look at two verses today because we are going to do some really neat introductions to a gift we want to give you. So, Maria, where, what are we talking about today? Well, thanks, yeah. All right, we are really excited about 2020, and we hope that at the end of this year, you will always look back at 2020 as a hindsight year because you grew so much in your faith. So one of the things we want to introduce to you is called a catechism. If you are like me, you might have grown up in a church that had a catechism, right? Like, I'm part, I was part of the Christian Reformed Church, so we had the Heidelberg Catechism. Maybe you were Lutheran, had the Lutheran Catechism, or the Catholic Catechism, the Westminster Catechism. A lot of denominations have a tool, and what this is, is it's a way to help people make sure they don't have any gaps in their faith, they know the faith, the truths of God's Word, right? But then it's also a tool to hand off the faith to the next generation. And catechisms are really cool because they have a question-answer format. And so if you're somebody who thinks in terms of deep questions and you're like, oh, what about this? What about this? A catechism is a great place to look for those answers, right? Now, in my tradition, I went to school with a lot of Christian Reformed people that went to churches that had catechism class and that wasn't really part of my tradition and so they looked at catechism as like oh man I have to memorize this and I have to take these tests and my pastor is not going to be happy with me because I don't know this and for me the catechism was just something that my parents talked to me about around the kitchen table at dinner and so my experience was that this is a joyful tool that could help me grow in my faith right and then I met this guy I'm just gonna, I'm, but we're transparent people. Yep. He had walked away from the faith, right? He hadn't gone to church in two years when I started dating Ben, and that just was not acceptable for me. It's not acceptable for God either. <laughs> I know. All right? And so when my parents discovered that this was really kind of a relationship that was going somewhere, my dad offered to go to breakfast with Ben once a week and they went through the Heidelberg Catechism, the questions and answers, and it was so rewarding for Ben because he, he's a teacher, and right, he thinks in terms of a good question and a good answer. And so it was really kind of a huge part of our journey. So if you're sitting here today and you're like, oh man, Maria's gonna make us do the Heidelberg Catechism, I thought that we got away from that. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna help you discover the joy of growing in your faith through a catechism today. All right, um, so we're going to watch a short video and then I'm going to introduce something. It's common to say that today we live in a post-truth world. That's not really possible to even say it's a post-truth world is to say something is true about it. And yet it means that people are confused about what the truth is. It has never been more important than it is today that the church ground its people in the truth once delivered to the saints in the Word of God. What's great about a catechism is it's personally interactive. Somebody asks a question, somebody gives an answer. It's almost natural then to talk about it. Catechisms, therefore, are great for a whole congregation to have a common set of questions that have been directed to the scripture. The catechism we produced is a shorter version. 
of the truths of God's Word based on the older and longer catechisms. It's also in somewhat more modern and simplified language. We think that means you can do one of these questions and answers every week for a year. The catechism is flexible enough so that you can give it to children in a more simplified version and it's a perfect way for parents to train their children up in the truth of God's Word. My hope and prayer for the New City Catechism would be that uh, people come to love doctrine. The Catechism, I pray, gives you an understanding of the theology of the Word of God. If you've mastered this truth, when you get out into the world, you'll find the truth will equip you, in a sense, to take life as it comes. You'll have certain roots, certain anchors, you might say, in God's truth, and you'll, you'll know what to do when things come at you. You'll actually be able to adapt. People are looking for hope today, but there is no hope without truth, and this is the truth. All right, so we have a free gift for you today. I didn't lie, right? We have a new city catechism for every family in this church, right? Every household. Um, I encourage you to grab one of these today. But if you have multiple people in your household, or maybe books are not convenient for you, there is a free app that follow, that has the book as well. Just search New City Catechism on your app store, and you will find it. And so I'm going to show you the app a little bit. Can we see the next slide there, Ed? So this is, you know, you search the New City Catechism, this is what you're going to get. You can tell I was downloading it. It's really kind of a cool tool to put on your tablet or your phone, wherever you want. If we go to the next slide, you're going to open it up, and we're starting with part one. As Tim Keller pointed out, Tim Keller and Kathy Keller, their church came up with this tool. There, there are 52 questions and answers. If you have a history with the Heidelberg Catechism, you know there was 52 Lord's Days in the Heidelberg Catechism. That's one for every Sunday of the year. So we're asking you to take one question each week, to just spend 15 minutes once a week, spending some time with a question and answer, but also in God's Word. So if we go to the next slide, the first question pops up. today. As a church, we're going to do the first lesson together. That's what Ben and I have worked on for this week. Our first question is, what is our only hope in life and death? And then you can click on this little show answer box, and it comes up, and it says that we are not our own, but belong to God. Okay, isn't that comforting? That we belong to God. So if we go to the next slide, Ed, at the bottom, there are three little tabs like this. This tab opens up the scripture verse, Okay, so today, this is why Ben said we're in the two verses. We're in Romans 14, 7, and 8. And then the next tab opens up a commentary. You can read a little devotional about it. Tim Keller is quoting John Calvin here. Don't get scared. They're not all about John Calvin, okay? And then the next tab is a prayer that you can pray um, regarding this, okay? And so it's kind of a cool little tool. Now, if you're, if you're excited about this tool as a family, you can open up the widget and put it in kids mode. And if you do that, the next slide shows you there's a song for every question and answer to help your kids learn. Um, so that's kind of a cool thing to do. My hope is that, you know, we like to have family dinner together. Sometimes family dinner does not happen as regularly as we want it to because of baseball schedules and football and basketball and play practice and stuff like that. But my hope is that our family on Monday nights will have family dinner and that we're going to do this together and go through the questions together and talk together. So I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah, and so each, just like in older catechisms that were written hundreds of years ago, they put different what they would call proof texts, that where is this biblical truth found? And so the, the short little couple passages or passages we're going to look at today comes from Romans. In this section of Romans, if your Bibles are open, it understands that people in the ancient world, just like people today, come from different backgrounds. They come from different traditions. And as a result, they have different preferences. And the church is very much a family. And just like all families, sometimes you have family squabbles. And in this particular passage, Paul is dealing with the family of squabbles where some people were saying that you couldn't do certain things because of the holiday. You couldn't eat certain things. And they were putting their preferences as essential things. While other Christians in the Roman church were demonstrating Christian liberty. And by doing that, there was a little bit of a conflict. And so in this particular passage, 
Paul wants the church and us to find unity in the truth that we belong to God. So keep all that in mind. We're just going to look at two verses, starting with verse 7. It will be up on the screen. For none of us lives for ourselves alone. And none of us dies for ourselves alone. For if we live, we live for the Lord. If we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. And now why are these verses important? And why is Lord's Day 1 now in the New City Catechism question and answer 1? We understand that at some point in church history, we started to focus solely on that our relationship with God is a personal thing. Now that's an important thing, that you all have a personal relationship with God. But what happened was, that was at the expense of what it means to be a Christian in a corporate setting, in a covenant community like church. And what's happened to the church in North America is that people that are part of churches forget what it means to be part of the God's family. And as a result, they forget that being part of a church like this is there's a measure of accountability, but there also requires some effort. And so the illustration that came to mind is about a decade ago, I joined the Paw Paw Conservation Club right across the highway there. And I didn't really know anybody. And so if you know Sarah Chandler's parents, Chet and Therese, that go here, that was the first time I met them at my first meeting. And so after you go through the process of becoming a member, they, they ask you to leave, and then you come back in, and they say, okay, you're welcome, yay! And then they kind of give you a pep talk. And I don't know if it was Chet or Therese, but one of the two said to me, look, and it wasn't just me, it was to everybody, look, don't let this be the only meeting we see you at. We want you to volunteer. We want you to get involved. We want you to share the love for the outdoors and the importance of conserving our natural resources with everybody you meet, especially in the next generation. And I said, all right. But I want to be honest, for the last decade, I've been kind of a taker at the Pop Art Conservation Club. Sure, I pay my dues, but I don't really put a lot of effort in that particular organization. Paul understands the tendency of people to just sort of be a spectator as part of God's family. And so what he's saying is, no, none of us live for ourselves alone. It's not just about us. We live in a very individualistic, self-centered society where we think everything is, well, what am I going to get out of it? That's not what Paul wants for the church. None of us lives for ourselves alone. None of us dies for ourselves alone. And when we move into verse 8, if we live, we live for the Lord. This too is difficult because we think we are in charge of our own life. But what Paul is saying, no, 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 you have a master. You know, I love what Rick said, you're real boss, right? That we think we have a supervisor, but guess what? The, the, the guy upstairs, he's our real boss, and as a result, he has certain obligations for us as part of this covenant community. For if we live, we live for the Lord, not for ourselves. Not always thinking, well, what am I going to get out of this? And then when he points out if we die, we die for the Lord, and I have to be careful here. What's so hard about this is I have extended family members that don't know the Lord, that have no hope, and all that they have is this life. And when one of our loved ones passes away, they get stuck because they think that death has the final word. Folks, what Paul is pointing out here is those that are in Christ, the people that we love, that have already gone to be with the Lord, we're going to see them again. And so death doesn't have the final word. And yes, we mourn their loss. And yes, we wish that we could spend time with them here. But the short time that we don't have with our loved ones is nothing compared to the eternity that we're going to spend with them later in life. And it's always hard when my family members get stuck where they can't even talk about death because it paralyzes them. Because they don't understand what Paul is saying here. When we die, we die for the Lord. Why? And it all gets summarized here. For whether we live, or we die, we belong to the Lord. The Greek verb there is to be. We are the Lord's. Do you understand the implications of that? We're not our own. We can't just go throughout life doing whatever we want. We belong to the Lord. And when you understand that, not just in an intellectual way, but when the knowledge that we belong to the Lord goes from our head 
to our heart, it changes our whole perspective. Going back to the kids game, what I was trying to illustrate with the kids, and Scott, wherever you are, you did a great job. Thank you so much. You don't really know if you made the right decisions until you get to the end. What we're saying, with the tools that churches like Red Arrow provide, you don't have to wait. Every single day you can say, Lord, how can I serve you? Because I belong to you. I'm not my own. How can I make decisions that are going to honor the true boss that we all have? And so when we go through that one road that has many journeys, we can very easily look back and have 2020 vision because we see how the Lord has been with us each and every step of the way. But we have to be intentional about that. We can't just coast. We can't just be spectators. We need to be active in growing in our relationship with the Lord. And that's where the New City Catechism we really think could be a helpful tool for even if you're a guest with us today, we want you to take one of those books for your family. So how does how does the catechism work? Okay. So now, now you know you can have a book or you have this on the app. What do you do with this catechism? Do you just open it up and read it? Or how do you interact with it? Well, no, I want to show you another tool. So we talk a lot about Right Now Media here, and so I hope that many of you have taken us up on our free subscription for you. This morning, if you're one of our subscribers, before church, I sent out a mass email, and it said something like, Maria Bowater has sent you a customized training, okay? Then if you got that email, then, you, then you'll know to just follow the instructions there. If not, send me an email, and I'm going to send you a link to Right Now Media, and what will, it'll show up like this when you log in. Um, this book of Philippians, that's the next women's Bible study, by the way. It's pretty exciting. Um, but when you open this up, when you log in, it's really hard to see, but over here it's going to say Red Arrow Ministries. And if you click on Red Arrow Ministries, it's going to take you to our channel. And in our channel right now, we have the New City Catechism, um, and then you click on that. Now, this is what will show up. These are some of the teachers. There's a lot of different speakers that are part of this. Um, and then you just click on question one. Now, I zoomed this way out so that you could see that if you scroll down, there's different interactive questions that you can just type your answers in right there, and there's a little short video to watch about each week. All right, so if we go to the next one. Oh, yeah. All right, so you can get, this is to show you that you can do this on your phone or tablet as well. Um, you can get the Right Now Media. Yes, I do have all of those streaming services. Don't judge. Um, then we go to the next one. Um, and you're going to go over to the library. You know how there's like three lines for a menu? Click on that, go to right, right now, or to the Red Arrow Mysteries, and then you're going to want to start the new city curriculum. All right? It's going to give you a little overview of what a catechism is. I kind of talked about that a little bit. Um, and then you'll hit next. And then the first thing I'll probably ask you to do is to watch the video. So we're going to take a minute and we're going to watch what Tim Keller has to say about our hope in life and death. At one point in his writings, John Calvin lays out the essence of what it means to live the Christian life. He says to do that, he could uh, make us a list of the commandments we should be keeping or a list of all the character traits we should be exhibiting. But instead, he wants to boil it down to the basic motive and the basic principle of what it means to live the Christian life. The basic motive is that God sent his son to save us by grace and adopt us into his family. So now, because of that grace, in joy and gratitude, we want to resemble our Father. We want the family resemblance. We want to look like our Savior. We want to please our Father. The basic principle then is this, that we are not to live to please ourselves. We're not to live as if we belong to ourselves. And that means several things. It means, first of all, we are not to uh, determine for ourselves what is right or wrong. We give up the right to determine that, and we rely wholly on God's word. We also give up the operating principle that we usually use in day-to-day -day, uh, life, and we stop putting ourselves first, and we always put first what pleases God and what loves our neighbor. It also means that we are to have no part of our lives that is immune from this self-giving. We're supposed to give ourselves wholly to him, body and soul, and it means we trust God through thick and thin, through the good and the bad times in life and in death. And how does the motive and the principle relate? Because we're saved by grace, we're not our own. 
A woman once said to me, if I knew I was saved because of what I did, if I had contributed to my salvation, then God couldn't ask anything of me because I made a contribution. But if I'm saved by grace, sheer grace, then there's nothing he cannot ask of me. And that's right, you're not your own. You're bought with a price. Some years ago I heard a Christian speaker say, how can you come to grips with someone who has given himself utterly for you without you giving yourself utterly for him? He gave himself wholly for you, so now we must give ourselves wholly to him. So then the next step after watching the video is that there'll be these questions. So the scripture passage that we just read comes up um, so that you can spend some time with the Lord in that passage. And then we'll go to the next one. And the first question, I think you want. Yeah, so Tim said, so again, we're acting this out to demonstrate how you're going to do this on your own. Tim said the basic principle of Christianity is that we serve God and not ourselves. We belong to God and everything we do flows from that foundation of belief. So, Moran, what stands out to you the most about this answer and why? I think, you know, when I think about belonging to God, as Tim just said a second ago, he pointed out that we belong to God at such a precious cost, right? Jesus went to the cross on our behalf and he sacrificed his whole entire life. And I can give more than an hour on Sunday morning in return. Right? I want to give my whole life. I want to give everything I am. I want to totally belong to God. When I think about my kids and how messy their playroom is or their bedroom is, and what do I always say? Take better care of your belongings. Right? But we serve the perfect God. And he never neglects his belongings. Right? He doesn't have a chaotic playroom. He has a perfectly ordered playroom that he is preciously taking care of each and every one of his belongings. And I have amazing joy to know that I am one of those. Very good. If you look at the next one. When we recognize that we are not our own, it changes the way we live our lives. We give everything we have, our lives, jobs, family, friends, emotions, fears, dreams, to God. We also trust in him to control and guide our lives. So, Maria, does this answer to this question impact your Christian walk? If so, how and why? Well, yeah. You know, if you've taken turn one and sat through when we talk about um, that we are committed to growing in prayer and worship here at Red Arrow, we talk about how worship is so much more than just singing songs on Sunday or coming to a worship service, that worship is our whole life, that every action we take should be an act of worship to our Lord, whether that's at work, doing the very best that we can, or in our family and how we interact with each other, or in our leisure, the decisions that we make for what we watch on TV or, or what social media we spend time with, all of those decisions, if we put the framework of, oh, this isn't actually my time, this isn't actually my money, this isn't actually my resources, this is the Lord's, it all belongs to Him, I belong to Him, you think differently about how you're gonna act each and every day. Absolutely. So if you look at the next one, please, Ed. So we read through that passage, we worked through it, and then again, there's a place where you could write in, and if you scroll to the next one, so the Catechism, again, helps you remember the core beliefs of Christianity. Take time this week to learn and answer the question and memorize Romans 14. Yeah. So that's a hard thing to do, but again, as was stated several times, when you put forth the effort, you're going to receive an amazing amount of blessings and forming of your worldview through that. Yeah, well, and that's why the kids' songs are so helpful. Renee is super excited about the children's curriculum we've been using in our kids' programming because of the music, right, Renee? And you said that it's so cool to see the kids, like, learning memory verses through music because that's grabbing hold of them, right? When you spend some time memorizing, what you're really doing is you're spending time meditating on that word, and God is hiding it in your heart so that when... When you need it, it's in that Rolodex for him to pull it out and remind you. Or maybe when your friend or family member needs a little bit of encourage, encouragement, it's there. So you can draw upon it and say it for them as well. Absolutely. So then when you are done with that particular class, you click finish. Yes. So if this is just a reminder that right now media is different than the New City Catechism app. 
right? You know, um, you'll, you'll want to either have the book to use with Right Now Media or use the app as well. Excellent. So if you go ahead, Ed, if you think back to the children's illustration, again, how many of you ever played the game of life? Keep your hands up. How many of you remember that when you were playing the game of life, you got to some point where you realized that one of your decisions maybe wasn't the wisest decision? Very good, hands down. Hindsight is 2020 is only helpful when we take the effort to look back and figure out why is it that we're in the position that we're in. That requires a bit of soul searching. I'll never forget a young couple asked to meet with Marie and I, couple, many years ago actually, and sat down and they wanted to find another role in relationship with the church, which is good. But immediately the meeting started to turn into a, a complaining and a whining session. They said, Ben Maria, we're not growing at Red Arrow. And again, Maria, in her wonderful pastoral tone, said, well, let me ask you some clarification questions. She first asked, so do you have an individual quiet time or, or a time of devotion each and every day? No. Okay. Um, do you as a couple get together and pray and, and ask the Lord to lead your life and your marriage? No. Okay, um, do you ever take advantage of any of the many opportunities that you have at Red River Ministries to grow in your knowledge of God and others? No. And Maria very patiently said, well, maybe that's why you're feeling like you're not growing. Because maybe you're not putting forth any effort in your relationship to grow in your knowledge of the Lord. And what the New City Catechism can do is give you yet another tool for you as an individual, for you as a family, for you as a couple, to be able in this new year of 2020 to go down the one road, because that's Christ, following Him, but the many different journeys that He takes us bring us to an understanding that we were made for so much more, and that when we put forth the effort, we come to see all the ways that the Lord has been working in our life. And so, how do we do that, Maria? All right. So if you've taken turn one, we've talked a lot about um, the four commitments that we've asked you at Red Arrow to make, right? One is from our journey guide. It's on the back of it. And we've asked you to make a commitment and turn your life over to Jesus Christ. If you have questions about that, grab one of these journey guides. Talk to one of the elders or Ben and I or really anybody in this room. We'd love to help you join the journey with Jesus. Um, so that's the first commitment. Then we've asked you to make a commitment to reach out by reaching one, right? We've asked you to go and pray for people who don't yet know the Lord and intentionally develop a relationship with them. And then to, when the Holy Spirit gives you the opportunity to share the truth of Jesus Christ within that relationship. We've also asked you to be on the stewardship journey, right? Where we say that all of our resources, all of our time, all of our talents, it all belongs to God. And so we want to be good stewards of all of that. And then we've asked you to have a role in a relationship within our church. Today, we're introducing a fifth commitment, okay? Our, our vision statement here is join the journey on the road with Jesus, building relationships along the way. <laughs> And what we mean by that is that there is one road that Jesus has clearly laid out for eternity, right? There is one way to God the Father, and that is through Jesus Christ. But there are many journeys represented in this room, all right? Now, here's a confession. Many of you think that I have the gift of administration. I do not. And I also do not do well with details. So we are missing the letter R in every card, in every book, in all of those good things. So when you look at this, I want you to take a minute and I love how your mom's laughing through all of it. She, she feels our pain. We spent hours putting all those cards in. You don't understand. Ben and my mom were my editors, but I didn't have time to send it to my mom. Um, anyway, so when you look at this journey and you see that the R is missing, I want you to remember that you were missing. Okay? You were missing from this journey. Um, next week there will be all new ones, but you can have one of the ones that, you know, and, and we're friends. You know, I mean, we, we go way back, like 20 minutes, right? So we're all friends here, and so you can just, you know, remember, Maria does not do well with letters. Um, but one road, many journeys, this is the commitment we're asking you to make. If you could grab one and look at where do I begin. So they're all in front of the chair in front of you. They're in the pockets of the chair in front of you or on the black tables. 
By signing this card, you're joining the faith development journey. We want you to pray for yourself and our church as we take the next step towards spiritual growth. Build relationships. Be intentional about connecting with God as an individual, with friends, and with the church family. Dedicate. Set aside time in your daily and weekly calendar for this commitment. Understand that this commitment requires effort. And then share. This is the same line that's on the Reaching Out by Reaching One. Share. As time goes on, the Spirit of God will give you kingdom opportunities to share how the Lord has worked in your life. Right? We want to look back next year, right, in 2021, and have a whole bunch of stories of how we grew on this, this one road with many journeys on it. If you look at the other side, this is the commitment side that we're asking each one of you to take one of these and commit to. In responding to the question, what is the greatest commandment, Jesus answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like this, love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. You know, this Jesus is quoting Deuteronomy here. And um, now that I've taken Hebrew and I've dug into this, when it says, um, and with all your mind, right, in, in Deuteronomy, like it's translated strength or might, it's actually an adverb. It just says, with all your very. That's all it says. Like, love the Lord your God with all your very. So giving all your effort, everything that's in you, all your might, um, that's, that's what it means to be on a faith development journey. And then the author of Hebrews points out the value of faith development in community. And let us consider how we may spur one another towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. If you want to grow, friends, that means you grow together. Right? This is why we're so excited about the small groups program. This is a way to spur each other up, right? It's a way to, to you know, have accountability. It's a way to hear God through somebody else in the discussion. And so, you know, if you look at my commitments, we're asking you today to pray about where are you going to grow as an individual? We've, we've had the GPS cards out for several years and the Bible reading plans are out again. Um, and then we've given you this new tool of New City Catechism. These are all ways to grow as an individual. But we also want you to grow with friends. That's where small groups come in, or Bible studies, or the men's breakfast. You know, it's really a great way to be intentional about learning and growing in community. And then with your church family. Coming to the worship service week after week is a big part. Nobody was meant to worship God completely on your own. There's something amazing when we all join together and declare God's praise and adoration in unison. It's powerful. So don't neglect that, all right? Um, so yes, you get the missing R, but you will no longer be missing, right? And so we encourage you to join the Faith Development Journey. Close the prayer? Sure. Please pray with me. Lord, we thank you for this understanding that we are not our own, but we belong to you. We know that, that our belonging came at a great cost to you, and we are in awe and humbled that you set up the course for our salvation and that you saw it through to its completion. And Lord, we are so amazed and in awe that you take the time to interact in our lives daily. And we want to grow in our faith. We want to grow in our understanding. And we want to grow in our experience of you. And so Lord, in this 2020, we ask that you help us make this commitment. Lord, for a lot of us, making a commitment is kind of a scary thing. So we, we know that we're going to need you to help us carry it through. And so we hand it over to you and we ask that as we're on this road together that we would start to learn the journeys of each other and we'd spur each other on. Lord, as we move forward, we just ask that a year from today, 
we would be able to give testimonies of the ways that you moved as we used the New City Catechism, of ways that you moved in our small groups so that, you know, it's not just a handful of couples up here saying, man, my marriage is so much better today, or man, I have a new family, but that each and every one of us in this room would have a story to share about how amazing it was to love you in community. In your name, amen.